manufacture, storage, and subsequent release of enzymes into the intestine for enhanced functionality. The, the problem we're trying to overcome is drug delivery to the small intestine, and mm -hmm. uh, protein drug delivery especially. The um, problem is that proteins, when they account for the stomach um, conditions, there's um, um, high acidity and enzymes in there which chop it into little pieces really. So yeah. the problem we're trying to overcome is to bypass the stomach and to release this protein of interest into the small intestine. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope to accomplish this by getting a bacteria to produce the compound of interest um, mm -hmm. then encapsulate itself with uh, um, polysaccharide um, sort of coating which is basically like a slime there. And um, once it's encapsulated itself with this coating it destroys its genetic information so it kills itself really. Yeah. Means it's no longer a viable cell and then we swallow the cell and <coughs> the slime capsule we hope will be sufficient to allow the bacteria to bypass the stomach. It's, it, de it depends how you perceive it, I guess, because um, everyone's going to have their own opinion, and I think it's going to be a debate, you know, whether it's ethically right, whether it's not. I don't think it's, that's going to be a debate, always. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it is up to people, you know, scientists, even if you're not, you know, top of the field, I think it's important to basically be able to relate what you can do in an understandable manner to people from the outside, just observing. But to actually create it, is something different mm -hmm. um, and to actually assemble different parts and actually see them function how you think they function um, is that something else because in, en in engineering you can you know you can predict okay you know you have a transistor you have a, a chipboard you know a motherboard you have a computer you know it's, it's going to work mm -hmm. you don't need knowledge of you know a transistor to know how to work a computer yeah um, and in well, in synthetic, synthetic biology, essentially, it's you know a similar kind of thing. Um, we've got all these DNA parts, and we understand how they work separately. And putting them all together and seeing whether they work yeah. um, is huge. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that we're going through this project. You know, we're kind of really starting to get results, and you know, we're seeing the DNA is there, and we're seeing the constructs work together, and we can see things, you know, progressing. Not yet, but we will do. I think there's sort of huge potential. The potential is sort of only bounded by your imagination, and so. Yeah. There's a, there's a huge level of creativity that you're able to feel that you can experiment with, and I'm, I'm you know, everyone has creative urges, right? But I'm no good at art. I can't paint. I can't draw. And this is something I feel that you know, you are, you always can have sort of a human nature's sort of artistic input into yeah. into the sort of creative force. It's really cool. That's you are kind of like when you want to treat it as a black box, so input, you you output. That's that's ideally what we want. I only heard about bi-breakthrough hygiene. Previously, biology was not really done like that. Like, synthetic biology is a really new field. Previously, what I think about biology is just like you know, a normal experiment. I think about building up, I think not so much about like engineering and modeling. Biology is mainly experiments. So, okay, let's see which experiment, the, if the experiment goes right or wrong. So, if let's say it's not what I expect, let me tweak it a bit here and there, but never ever thought about modeling like biology and biology. Last time when I was about modeling, it would be like um, chemical engineering. Right? Yeah. Model this flow of the water. But right now, modeling is going to biology, which is really, really great. So maybe next time when we, when we develop this field more, hopefully models can actually help the biologists pr predict more accurately on what's going to happen. Also with iGen, it's quite good because you have the generation now of scientists and they're basically transferring their knowledge down to us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's up to us to basically make sure we grasp onto that um, and we you know, deal with it in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. so. so I can I can understand that it's a weird idea that you pop this kind of piece of bacteria into your body. But at the same time, I think it's more about um, getting past that kind of notion getting past a certain, um, this kind of um, fear of it and getting used to the, to the idea. Mm -hmm. I think that will come as 
there are more like safety tests and all that. The people are sure, okay, this is a safe thing to do. I understand the, the issues raised, and as a matter of fact, I mean, we, uh, we all understand it as a team. Um, and that's why we made a conscious choice of adding what we call module three, which is uh, a genomic neutralization. So basically, it's making sure that the bacterium is dead uh, before delivery or before oral delivery. In the pill. So, you know, the, there is, um, it's been designed, and we, we, we've thought about it um, in the design and we've implemented it. So, um, we're aware of, of, of those GM issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we are more than happy to get it tested. That's, that's the best thing, actually, that can happen, you know, by other people, by, by, uh, by other groups. And that's why we're, we're exposing it in IGM competition. It's great. Because then people might say, well, that's not enough, or that's actually, okay, that's good, you know? Um, and in the case it's not enough, then, well, you know, we, we, that's, that's good dialogue. We're ready to go back and, and say, okay, so what, what would that, that will make it uh, safe? And secure, uh, and as a society where we would agree, you know. So as scientists, we try and solve those problems. But you know, just, that's the first level of competition. And if this goes through further, uh, then we would need to speak to to other maybe government bodies or, or people who assess risk uh, from a, a societal point of view. So from from society, really. these are, are are very big issues, and I think. It's important to try and solve them as scientists first, but also to accept that um, um, external bodies must um, think about it and, and, and also decide on, on have a part, a big part of the decision must be made there. Sure. I believe the technology has a potential to disseminate so fast and sort of untraceably in terms of uh, the DIY community. Right. Um, so it's, I don't think I don't think it's as much as the risks in terms of being able to control activity, but uh, possibly being able to understand and, and uh, grow, a, grow a community that is able to think responsibly and responsibly as well. Um, so I guess, I guess uh, it's a bottom-up approach to risk, and that's what needs to be sort of fostered in, in sort of the nascent field. And you need to talk about things. Uh, scientists mm -hmm. need to explain uh, what the, the real risks are, uh, not dim them down. Um, the, the scientists need to be able to understand the fears, um, and sometimes fear are irrational. They're not, you know, it's, it's a completely different level. So they, they have to, to understand their science, but also be uh, human beings understand why people are why people fear. It's whether they're right or not. That's a very valid question, whether they're right to, 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 to be in fear or not. Um, so I think it's, it's really, the dialogue is key. Um, and I mean, as I said earlier, it's, it's, it will be really key.